I've got something in my front pocket for you. Why don't you reach on in my pocket and see what it is? Then grab onto it, it's just for you. Give a little squeeze and say, how do you do? Something in my front pocket for you. Why don't you reach on in my pocket and see what it is? Then grab onto it, it's just for you. Give a little squeeze and say, how do you do? There's something in my front pocket. There's something in my front pocket. There's something in my front pocket. Boom, boom. We are ready to go. We're starting a little late. Uh, technically, I think two hours later than we normally do, but that is for good reason. I basically had to work late. That's that's really all. Um, I do plan on moving these more to the evening throughout the summer just because there will tend to be a larger audience available during those times. Uh, this is just what we got right now. We're in the last week of school. Finals are coming up. We are in the home stretch and we're going to get there. We're going to get there. But hello to everyone who is watching this live. I see Geralt of Rivia, Spartan Kitty Games, Jonathan Salcedo, Salcedo, what I, I don't, I can't pronounce things. Um, we got Syndicate Broad, WBHY. We got Toby is Fabulous. Uh, Dimitri Delafield, we got uh, Thurston Moncrief, we got a lot of a lot of uh, regulars here. Um, so cool, cool, cool. We had some cool things we're going to talk about. I did change the layout, as you can see. Normally, we'd be filming right here, uh, aiming this way. We've actually shifted it all, so we're shooting this way. I was just bored of the same old setup, and I tried shifting it, and I wanted to move this thing in here to try to see if that would make um playing on my consoles a little more comfortable i'm still the jury's still out but we'll we'll decide but we got some cool things that we want to talk about primarily we're going to talk about outlast 2 today i have a lot of thoughts on this game um We'll get to that. <laughs> I have filmed a video for Monday on it, completely focused on Ludo Narrative Dissonance, which that game is a, a embodiment of. It is <laughs> just like it's it's got some issues. We'll address it later on. But we do have some cool things. Um, just quick uh, rundown of some news for those of you who have not heard these things yet. I will. Uh, just run through these real quick. Um, Dead Space 2 and 3 are coming to Xbox One backwards compa compatibility uh, today or technically yesterday, I guess. Um, but if you were not aware of that and you have an Xbox One, now you can play those backwards compatibility if that makes sense. So congratulations, you are a member of the cool backwards compatibility club. We also, if I can do this... There we go. Um, Nintendo is not hosting a large scale press conference or anything at E3, which is really surprising to me. Uh, I had people that I felt were reliable saying that they were going to do stuff. They're going to show up some big titles, but apparently they're not um, at all. They said in a statement on their official website, their American website, um, they said, again, this year, we will not be hosting a large-scale press conference for institutional investors and that, or analysts and the media. Nintendo of America will present further information on our plans at a later date. And quote, that's, I mean, like I said, they did that last year as well. They didn't do anything. Um, but I, I imagined with the Switch, they would have something to show off. They'd have some games to show off. But apparently not uh they're they're not doing anything um this might be because they're going and they're going to be doing more of these nintendo whatever they're calling them what are they calling them nintendo direct i think uh yeah nintendo direct and they just do kind of their own press conferences uh like the one they held earlier this week when they unveiled the sequel to this monstrosity this is the nintendo 2ds and it is a horrible looking device it it's just horrible i don't want to explain why this looks horrible if you don't find it ugly uh beyond all imagination i i'm not really sure how to help you but um they announced the sequel to that which is the uh new nintendo 2ds xl which I will play muted for you. So you can kind of see what they're doing with it, where they're moving. Um, 
this came totally out of left field totally out of left field because they had the freaking switch i'm going to turn off annotations um they had the freaking switch which i have one and we'll talk about that in just a second but then they unveil this guy so they have two mobile consoles and they just announced a new one um i'm a little confused i'll be honest they said it's aiming more for a younger audience, which apparently they weren't aware that that was already their audience for the 3DS titles, but I, I'm just a little surprised. Um, so yeah, that, that was a surprise. That's something I wasn't didn't see coming, uh, but it happened. So if you were looking for a 3DS or a 2DS and didn't like the monstrosity that was the previous 2DS, you can now um, get a foldable one. So there you go. There you go. It's basically a, a DS. <laughs> it's a DS coming out in 2017. That's it. If you're carrying around one of those and not a Switch, I'm going to make fun of you. Okay. I'm, I'm going to tease you. And you're older than 10. I'll tease you a little bit because like, seriously, I get that it's small. You can fold it, put it in your pocket, but still like still, I, that's, it just looks kind of absurd. Get a Switch. Grow up. Grow up. Anyway. So that happened. Um, today also is Friday, April 28th. That's the time we are recording this. And it is the launch day for this uh, game right here. I have not opened it yet um, because I wanted to open it live. I don't know if there's any materials inside. Nothing like that. But I did uh, reserve it at my local GameStop because... In Fort Collins, Colorado, there is nothing available Nintendo-wise unless you pre-order it or get incredibly lucky. And after hunting for a Switch for two months, basically, or a month and a half or whatever it was, I decided that I needed to just, you know, I'm going to buy it. I'll, I'll just set aside the money. This is one of those games. There's a few games on the Switch and on Nintendo consoles that usually are a must-have. Like, they are the games that make the console worth buying essentially and in the past like with the wii it was for instance the like uh, smash bros you had of course mario kart you had some other titles um but there's always a couple games that are just safe bets that you know are going to be great and you're going to get either which way and mario kart is one of them same with zelda and i would say uh, an updated smash bros whenever that comes out um everybody is going to own those like that's going to be a over zelda has an over 100 percent adoption rate or conversion rate so if you bought a switch more than 100 percent of people who own switches are buying zelda for the switch it's hard to fathom, but in the U.S., they sold 906,000 Switches and, like, 925,000 copies of Zelda for the Switch, which is a little insane, but uh, we're going we're gonna to open this live. And, yes, we're going to lick it. I think it's a tradition now. Whenever we open a game live, it's still shrink-wrapped where I need a pen. It is a tradition now. That whenever we open a Switch game live, this video might get banned in Australia. I'm using a pocket knife. We got to be careful. Um, live, we got to lick it. We got to lick it. So we're going to take off the plastic. Come on. Damn you. Okay. These cases are really cute. Let's see. Let's see what's in it. Oh, okay. That's kind of cool. They got the instructions for it. Okay. It smells weird. It smells really weird. That's that's a bummer. Um, I, I'm also a little ticked that they aren't including any manuals or paper or anything. Like, they have these clips for it. I don't know if you can see those, but they have clips for putting, like, a little manual or a little anything. But none of the Switch games I've gotten so far have had it. They've done this cool thing throw that away they do, do this cool thing where they put like the manual kind of on the back piece of this like let me show you zelda and that um Ugh. my friend olivia made me that lukey poo where's my finger there it is uh that lukey poo pillow and it's great and i i love it um but like with zelda and the binding of isaac the binding of isaac they did the same kind of menu based 
or or telling the story of the game, which is kind of cool, gives you a reason to keep the case, you know? I know some people that throw away their cases and just keep them in, like, big racks. It drives me crazy. Um, Zelda just had a little a little artwork on the inside, but it's better than the blank empty cases you get on most like PS4 and Xbox titles. Um, and yes, if you have not seen the Zelda video yet, you should. I put in a lot of work with it. It's done okay. I think it passed like, it's about 1100 views, not anywhere near where I would like it to be. Um, but if you haven't seen that yet, go watch it and look for this card with hashtag Zelda bong. Only two people so far that I've noticed spotted this in the video and commented with hashtag ZeldaBong. So um, definitely do that. Do that. You'll earn my affection. Enough stalling, I suppose. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe right there. There we go. Come on. Come on, Daniel. Okay. Here he is. They rattle. Can you hear that? It, it rattles. All of the Switch titles rattle, and I don't know why. I don't know if you can hear that, but I probably look crazy. But there it is. It's really little. Are you ready? I have my English breakfast tea, even though it's uh, mid-afternoon for this very reason. Here we go. Uh... It, 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 yeah. it honestly gets worse. Like you, you tap it on your tongue and then it spreads out. Oh, oh, that is not pleasant. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. I'm gonna take out Zelda was in there last. I'm gonna take that out. Oh, so gross. And this is one of the coolest things about the Switch. It's one of the reasons I love the cartridge. Um, yeah, I know, I know. I closed. There you go. One of the coolest things about the Switch, and one of the reasons I love the cartridges. Uh, period is because they're so crazy fast. So I'm going to put this in the slot and watch how quickly it shows up from the time I push it down. Ready? And boop. There it is. Already loaded up and ready to go. That's that's the miracle of solid state, everyone, ladies and gents. And it, it showed up. It's there. And it's taking its sweet time. There we go. Already booted up and ready to play. That's one of the reasons I do like it. I uh, wish more of these titles. Oh, wow, that looks really good. It's rendering in uh, 60 FPS, too. The camera, the little webcam, does not do it justice, of course. But it's um, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Uh, I will play that after the stream, of course. But I thought it would be fun to uh, unbox it and wrap it live. Um, so we can share that moment together, that intimate moment we just had. It was so magical. I will remember it forever. Oh, imagine, I, I bet you there's going to be a time in the next like year or two or three when there's a big controversy because some crazy person went into a Nintendo factory and put arsenic or something or ricin onto the stickers to the cartridges and all these people that weren't supposed to lick it licked it and died and they're like so we know who the idiots are they win the darwin award um but yeah no it's it's fun you guys wanted me to lick it i'll lick it day one patch uh let's see let's see that's a good question Geralt of rivia is there a day one patch for mario kart let's see if we can just start Left, right, select a me, I'll create my own. But no, it looks, it looks like we can just get right in. Yeah, no, look, We're, we can already start playing. Grand Prix, 200cc, Mario. Yeah, no, there's no, there's no day one patch. It's ready to go. It's ready to go. I mean, it better be ready to go. This is a port of an older game, but um, that's kind of cool. Um, that's kind of cool. Lisa McGram says uh, that her notifications for the videos keep stopping. That is really frustrating. I've heard that happening a lot. Um, we'll d discuss a similar topic about halfway through the show today um, about kind of the future of the channel on YouTube, where we're going, how I'm going to deal with a lot of the issues that are around. Um, but that's reason enough to go and 
uh, follow me on Twitter if you aren't already, because I tweet out all the videos. I, when I went live, I tweeted out that I was going live. Um, and if you can set the bell on that so you get a notification to your phone every single time I tweet so that you never miss a video, it's a safe way, uh, a safe bet. Um, but yeah, it's very refreshing, as Geralt says, to have a game that does not have a day one patch. And frankly, semi-shocking. But as I said, it is a game that's a previous port of an older title, so it makes sense. But at the same time, they've added new stuff. The battle mode, apparently they've added a lot to it. The battle mode on the, the Wii U for Mario Kart 8 was apparently horrible. They just gave you like bombs and shells and stuff to fight each other. King of the Hill type games, uh, Keep Away, Cops and Robbers, those types of games. Um, and they just set you on tracks and said, go wild. There's no limitation on which direction. You just drive around and shoot each other. It was really lame. But apparently with this game, they've actually added in a lot of those different little areas. It contains all the DLC, all the characters. It contains, um, of course, it runs technically better than the Wii U does. Some people were saying it doesn't. It runs, the Wii U rendered it at 720p, I think at 60fps as well. It runs at 720p at 60fps on the handheld. And then when you put it in the dock, it goes to 1080p at 60fps, which is uh, really, really cool. It's, I don't know if that's a first for Nintendo first party games, 1080p at 60 FPS, but I'm, I'm going to love it. I'm going to love it, honestly. Mm. Also, I'm at that point where I'm starting to see the end of Zelda. I can see it uh, coming and I just have to pace myself a little bit because I don't want it just sitting there collecting dust. I want to have something to do. And if I play all these games too quickly, then I will not. And um, the fact that Nintendo is not hosting an E3 event this year is a little concerning and makes me think that maybe um, I will have to wait another year to get some of those games that I was told would be coming to this uh, system. But we'll just have to wait and see. We'll just have to wait and see. Let me take a look at my notes. I, I actually took notes on what I wanted to discuss because a lot of people have been saying that's too kind of all over the place. That it should be a little more structured. Um, and we're going to try to do that a little bit. Uh, back when we were doing the show, before we did it live, it was much more structured because I had to film it with my DSLR and I had to actually go set it up and in between shots, cut the camera, cut the mic, and then sync it all up in post. And that naturally made it so I had to do 15, 20 minute segments and it was much more structured. I could have clear transitions between topics much easier. Whereas right now it's much more fluid. It's much more off the cuff. Um, and so... I'm going to try to to get the best of both worlds. I'm going to try to not get distracted by the chat too much right now. I will keep an eye on it, of course. But at the same time, I'm also going to um, try to embrace the live stream aspect with a Q&A at the end of the episode. So if you are watching live, you can leave uh, tweet those comments to me on Twitter so I don't lose them. And so you don't forget them at Luke Stevens TV. Uh, tweet them at me and I'll get them in my notifications. I can go through those first and foremost to make sure that they get in the show. So uh, definitely tweet them at me before anything else. Um, but with all that said, so uh, Call of Duty World War II, of course, is uh, officially announced. I got this at GameStop when I went in to get Mario Kart. Um, it's a little handout they have actually on the game. It's actually pretty cool. If you have a GameStop around you, I recommend even just going in. These are free little flyers and it's kind of cool. Um, they offer some info on the game and some uh, cool art kind of cool but uh call of duty world war ii i hate the name i think it's uninspired uncreative and it's 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 just i mean i don't know what i expected but like it's it's just uninspired but they seem to be putting in a lot of effort they seem to have spent a lot of time really really carefully uh, tried to approach the historical accuracy of this game properly which is rare nowadays uh which i think is very very good because we are talking about a war that killed millions upon millions upon millions of people and to not have it be historically accurate and to have it so like oh we have like everyone in the game is a transgendered horse donkey and we're all friends and we're all one culture and all this it would have made no sense at all um and it would have been really insulting to the families 
question to anybody who knows anything about the war. And so I, I'm glad to hear that they're approaching it much more uh, professionally, seriously, and maturely. It's uh, a weird shakeup, but it's something that I welcome with open arms. So I don't have too much to say about it. What I can say is that they actually copyrighted, Activision copyright struck my video discussing it. So I, I'm getting nothing from that video, of course. Not like it was going to be very much, but um, they, they struck it because I showed a uh, portion of their trailer and they didn't like that because I was promoting their game for them. Therefore, they need to take all the money from my labor and, and all that. So um, whether or not I'll cover that game in detail moving forward, I'm not sure. Not only is it not super financially viable for YouTubers to do so, but also we stand the chance of getting our channels damaged for covering the, that content. Because if they change their mind one day and change it from host the video and claim the ad revenue to strike the channel that's one strike you only get three before your channel gets deleted so it's it's probably not worth it unless they change that policy but um that's what's happening right now with call of duty world war ii we'll just have to see where it goes um bully 2 i, I want to know how many of you guys went and played uh uh, bully back in the day by uh, uh, Rockstar. I always want to say Rocksteady. It's Rocksteady and Rockstar. Rocksteady did the Batman Asylum games and Rockstar did um, the, uh, of course, GTA 5 and Bully and all those games. Let me know if you played Bully. Uh, I'd, I'd really like to see how many of the people watching have, have played it. But Bully was a game that launched in 2006. It was, of course, developed by Rockstar. And uh, if you haven't seen it, haven't played it at all, I recommend looking up gameplay, looking up uh, PewDiePie. He did a great playthrough of it. Uh, it really, it's like early PewDiePie, so it's actually really entertaining and fun. Um, and it's just, it's really cool because the name makes it sound like you're playing as the bully. But no, you're actually playing as this kid who was put in a school and you have to deal with all these bullies that are coming at you. And it's kind of a commentary on... Um, schooling and education across the globe, not just in America, of course, but it's really interesting. It's really cool. It says some really uh, cool stuff about our, our society and culture. Um, let me look up, actually, I should have done this before, but we can actually look up bully gameplay. Come on. What, where, where, oh, nope. What? Bully Gameplay. This is from Rabid Retrospect Games. Let me share this screen just so you can see what this looks like. And uh, it's actually a really, really fun game. If you haven't played it and you're looking at going back and playing some oldies, I highly recommend it. But there's a leak that it's getting a sequel. This came from a... Uh, leaker by the name of Jan2295. He apparently has a good record with Rockstar leaks. He predicted the whole uh, Red Dead Redemption 2 release date, window, whatever, and uh, he predicted that this game is currently the next one in development and will be the next to release after Red Dead Redemption 2. Now, that will have been over 11, 12, 13 years since the launch of this, uh, the original game, which is going to look like night and day. As you can see on screen, graphics have not aged very well. Lip syncing is still better than Outlast 2 and uh, Mass Effect Andromeda, but <laughs> what are you, you going to do? But it's really fun. It's hard to describe, so I recommend you look it up. But it's a really, really interesting game um, and a cool concept. It was banned in Australia. No, well, not banned, sorry. It, the name in the UK, rather, I'm still on, I'm thinking of Outlast. Uh, the name was forced to be changed in the UK. They didn't like the name Bully, even though you're not playing as a bully necessarily. You're playing as somebody who's being bullied. And it's about kind of overcoming and facing those, um, con or confronting those challenges. And of course, they didn't know anything about video games. They didn't look into it. They didn't play it. They didn't even read the synopsis of the game, but rather the UK demanded that they change the name. I'm not sure what they changed it to. So if you're from the UK and you don't recognize the name um, Bully, then it's possible because you know it by another name that I'm not familiar with. Um, 
But yeah, no, it's it's really cool. Roger Flugel in the chat says uh, Rockstar is known for not giving a fudge what uh, or not giving a fudge for what sensitive people think. Uh, I completely agree. And I that's one of the reasons I love them, because with Grand Theft Auto 5, they don't care that like you could perceive some of their stuff as super, super edgy or really like difficult to deal with um, commentary and and it's really really good and i think it's important just like i have always said south park has a place family guy has a place in american society uh, specifically for that commentary and for the satire that it offers because it keeps everyone in check no one is immune the second you make one group immune um is the second everyone is immune and you can't do that you just you can't and so i really appreciate what they do and how they push those boundaries when other companies try it like ubisoft and uh like they tried it with watchdogs 2 it just came off in the wrong way. It came off, instead of satire, it came off much more as trying to indoctrinate and lecture. And so it's a hard thing to get right, but it's one of the reasons that uh, Bully was so well-received. And it wasn't necessarily well-received at the time of release, but it was well-received when um, the game got more of a cult following on YouTube, probably because PewDiePie played it and everyone realized what a hidden gem it was. So it's really cool. Um, yeah, like the torture scene, Arvin points out, uh, the torture, sh torture scene in GTA five. That's a scene that got a lot of people really, really upset. They're saying it's glorifying torture, but Rockstar said, well, no, we're showing how horrible it is and how it's, it's so messy. And you have to honestly think, is this worth it? And it makes you see, it makes you confront those issues whereas just not putting in the in the game because oh it's so mean or cruel or whatever you would have or stand the chance of those people of gamers never seeing that actually take place even though it's only in a video game but they would never actually see what it's like and i think that it was very important and it's one of the reasons rockstar is certainly one of my favorite developers of all time um, but Bully 2, yeah, rumored to be getting the next release from Rockstar, which makes sense. They uh, have, of course, recently been known for games like Bully, um, Red Dead Redemption, and, of course, Grand Theft Auto. They've tended to focus mostly on Red Dead and Grand Theft Auto, but... Grand Theft Auto 6 is not going to be coming out uh, anytime soon. They do the long-form development cycle. It's still incredibly popular, um, so there's no reason to put it out right now. Red Dead Redemption 2 is going to be crazy successful later this year. I'm going to play the crap out of it. Uh, you can bet your butt I am, and it makes sense that they would go back to a basically a franchise that now has a new cult following um, just because it wasn't popular release doesn't mean anything because now there are people that would want to play it even though they might not have wanted to play it when it came out initially so that's an interesting rumor and it makes sense it's from a credible source at least as credible as you can get with leaks and speculation and gossip so take uh take it with a grain of salt but it's it's interesting it's interesting nonetheless. Uh, Roger Flugel says also CD Projekt Red could be the next rock star, in my opinion. It's they have a long way to go before they can demonstrate that. Um, of course, they serve a different purpose. They aren't uh, satire and commentary on American society and, and all that which is Rockstar's, I'd say, primary uh, purpose and one of the reasons that I love them the most. But rather, CD Projekt Red tries to deliver what other RPG developing companies have never been able to do um, with narratives. Now, of course, they've only really had one game that demonstrated their ability for that, The Witcher 3. I would say they need to do it twice to demonstrate that they really are a studio capable of that. Lots of studios have fluke uh, successful um uh, releases and, and games and products that doesn't mean that they are one of the best developers in the industry. So I love CD Projekt Red and everything they've, they've ever done, but I think they still have to prove it. And that transitions quite nicely into our primary topic. Out last. Gotta wait for the, yeah, there it is for the fade in <laughs> two. <laughs> Outlast two. Um, Outlast two launched on the 25th. 
so three days ago i do i do declare i do declare um it's i have a lot to say about it uh i will not spoil much the gameplay you're seeing on screen is from uh the opening of the game so it's it's nothing spoilery later on this is the first stuff that you play through and see um the game is very beautiful very beautiful at least on my 1070 it uh, runs beautifully looks beautiful it's gorgeous um except for of course the facial animations and lip sync horrible like worse than mass effect andromedas and i'm not i'm not lying we'll probably see a clip of some people trying to talk and it looks so weird it's really really bad um really really bad lip sync i, I i'm not sure why it's it's not that big of a problem normally but the problem is primarily that the the game looks so good otherwise like look at this hallway the hallway looks so good the lighting the textures the everything is just so beautiful and then you see people start to talk and you're like oh my gosh she looked like joan rivers after she had i'm not gonna go there um <laughs> rest in peace i'm sorry but it's it's gonna be just interesting to see uh how it develops with dlc and the like but uh, certainly one of the primary issues with the game is pacing. And actually, uh, Lisa McGram in the chat points that out. The, she says, it looks good, but the pacing of the game is horrible. And I could not agree more. The problem is, as you see on screen right now, the game constantly switches back and forth between the in-game time or the modern day time and the sort of metaphysical weird flashback type sequences that are really trippy really weird and it, it's going to take a lot of of thinking to figure out what they all mean but it's apparently his school from your main character's childhood the problem with that it's cool for storytelling purposes but the issue is that the game actually offers uh no real um it's it's just horribly horribly paced it, throughout the entire game you're going back and forth back and forth back and forth and so right after an intense moment it it goes to the school and you're like oh i thought this was intense okay well i guess we're tearing down all the tension we just built and okay i guess we'll go back there and then you get your kind of calm and composure back and then they do it back and, and throw you back into it um the game is also pretty short it only asks for 30 dollars though so it's a cheaper game so that's okay. Um, I can justify that, and that's a little more understandable. I'm really glad they didn't charge uh, $60 for it. It would have driven me absolutely crazy for them to do that. Um, so I'm glad that they're at least aware of the limited quantity. But you see the lip sync is really, really awful. It's really bad. Um, one of the other issues I have with it is exactly what you're seeing on the screen right now. It's that the game now tries to embrace the video camera instead of just having you filming constantly they have you so you need to go and as you see on the screen right now you need to go and film certain sequences and a little red ring will fill up when you filmed it because he's basically filming a documentary the problem is that this slows the game down so much because you're in an intense moment and then you're like oh i gotta film it when any reasonable human being in this situation looking for his wife that might be dead in that helicopter right now or might be injured and bleeding out next to the helicopter you instead have to play through and the game makes you film it in these intense moments and it's one of the reasons in monday's video i'm gonna address ludo narrative dissonance which uh, essentially ludo narrative dissonance was a uh, term coined in 2007 in a blog post by a developer named clint um hawking and he worked for uh ubisoft and lucas arts as well but it's it's uh really really just frustrating it's it's frustrating because what it means ludo narrative dissonance it, it means that there's a space between the game's narrative and the game's gameplay so as you go through the game you are, are doing things that you wouldn't do or the narrative wouldn't call for you to do or the other way around the narrative is having you do stuff that the gameplay wouldn't want you to do so the primary issue is just like this your wife might be dead 
right then and there or be bleeding out, but instead the game makes you film it. And this happens throughout the entire game. You don't necessarily have to film every sequence, I understand that, but it's incredibly important for every narrative uh, to understand what's going on. You have to film at least large chunks of it. And uh, it, it really tore me out every time because then you pull it back out, you can check on your camera and hit play, and then you can watch and... Um, it's like you can go back and you can replay it. So you're just rewatching the thing that you just filmed and just watched, but with a little voiceover again. It's it's really frustrating. I much would uh, much rather would have had. Um, I would have much rather had. That's what I was trying to say. Uh, I would would have much rather had something where you f like film all these sequences. And you're just playing the game, and then at the end of the game, it uses some algorithm to piece together a little documentary on what you recorded and whether or not you were able to, like, maybe, I don't know, convict the people or convince the police of something. I don't know. Approve your case whatever i don't know it could have been an achievement if you filmed everything but it really is is frustrating to me um let's see let's see um Nahuel says something really funny. He says, uh, really, in today's society, I wouldn't be surprised if people filmed intense moments instead of actually doing something. Um, yeah, no, that's that's definitely fair. That's definitely fair. But the problem is, is that it, I think it is his wife. And at least in this setting, the setting demands much more... Um, a much more reasonable and rational response. Like this instance, you see a man that's been skinned alive. Disclaimer, I'm, I suppose. Uh, <laughs> you see a man that's been skinned alive, the pilot from the helicopter, and you should be like, oh crap, how long did they have to do that? And where's my freaking wife? Because they just did this to this man. She's either dead already or she's in real danger. So I need to find her. But instead... You need to film it so that you understand what's going on. And it totally, totally pulled me out every time to the point where I basically stopped filming um, after 10 minutes of, of gameplay because I was like, this this is ruining it. It's it's pulling me out the entire time. Um, it's, it's really, really, really frustrating. And it pulls me out. Um, and I'm, I'm normally good at pulling out, but not in this case. <laughs> <laughs> that was cheap. I admit it. You have permission to be upset with that joke. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm immature. I'm an immature fool. I'm sorry. But uh, furthermore, furthermore, the game uh, extends the Ludo narrative dissonance past just the filming of these these little tidbits. And it goes back to one of the core staples of Outlast in general. And it's one of the reasons I think, and I tweeted this out the first time I got my hands on Outlast 2. I said, Outlast 2 seems to have kept all the things it should have shed. And it seems to have gotten rid of all the things they should have kept. They seem to have gone in the complete opposite direction. Some people are saying that they just tried to make this game to appeal to Twitch streamers, which I think makes a lot of sense. Um, I, I think that's certainly probably what they were doing. It's what gave their initial game success and uh, exposure, and they tried to just embrace it. And honestly, the more you get through this game the more you realize that the development team honestly must have just had every week they sit around a table and they just say and come up with the grossest, dirtiest, most macabre thing they can. Or like, what could be something really disturbing we could have happen? Okay, yeah. Yeah, let's do that. And then they're like, it's not quite there. Let's just add some poo in there. And like, it's just, it's so, so, so frustrating because uh, it loses the finesse of the first game, where the finesse of the first game was there, and, and uh, the Whistleblower DLC, you know, at the opening sequence, the guy licks you, and you're like, whoa, what just happened? That's nothing in this game. It, like, the one of the main villains licks you right off the bat in the opening hour of the game, and you're like, what? Okay, and then it keeps happening. It's just, like, licking you all over the place. Like, throughout the entire game, it's just trying to turn up the notch on disturbing, horrendous, terrible terrible things and uh i recorded that video for monday yesterday 
Um, but since then I finished it. I finished the game. It's really short. The game is really, really short. Again, one of the reasons I'm glad they're only charging 30. Is it worth 30 bucks? No, I, I would wait till this goes on sale. I'm really disappointed in the game actually. Um, but they, it's, it's really short and I finished the game and I won't spoil it or anything, but it's, I'm trying to figure out how to how to word it without botching it if you want to play the game. Basically, all I can say is that the game... It, I feel like it's trying to be something that it's not and something that it can't be. I think that the game is weighed down by the name Outlast 2. People expect more and uh, polish and iteration in a sequel, not just a raw sort of blind carbon copy and extension of all the things people were frustrated by. When you're in an instance where you're being chased down by somebody through a corridor and there's a lot of stuff to your left, to your right, wherever that you can throw down behind you. If there's a barrel and you're running away from them and they have a massive ax. You would pull down that barrel to, so that they trip it or have to jump over it. You would throw rocks at them as they run towards you. You would slap them and hit them and claw their eyes out or do whatever you could to survive. That's natural. That's instinct. It's not just something where, oh, well, they're a pacifist and they are Gandhi. Namaste. And they won't do anything to hurt you. I don't know why I'm German in this instance. <laughs> but like, it's not one of those instances. It's natural. It's instinctual to defend yourself when you're being killed. But in this game, apparently it's not. No matter what you do... You can't do anything. All you can do is like, no, don't, don't eat my organs. Oh, I'll film you. I'll film you. Don't eat me. It's so, so stupid because any rational person would pick up that frying pan and carry it with them because they see they just skinned the pilot alive. I need to make sure I can hit somebody with an iron pan or uh, with whatever cast iron skillet. It's... But no, the game can't allow you to do that. This fence that's three rungs high, you can't climb over, even though you can jump up certain ledges. But no, that would make it too convenient to get away from the uh, enemies that they have in the game. So they decided to take it out. Um, so you, you can't jump over certain things. You can't climb up that pile of wood, even though it's only two feet high, because that would be too convenient. I think it just lacked the creativity um, and, and care that went into the initial game, but it's, it's still really disturbing. It's, it's really disturbing, which is one of the reasons that I think it, it works and it does its job. Honestly, this game tries to be Outlast, the whistleblower DLC for Outlast um, times a hundred. They like if you played that DLC and you saw how disturbing that DLC was, um, then you should know that it's it's horrendous. But they try to turn that up to a thousand, and that's all I can really say. But it really is disturbing. In the first game, they managed to be horrendously disturbing with see, like right there, a shovel or a whatever that is. I would pick that up and carry it with me. But no, he doesn't. He's like, I have to film it. I can't attack it. I'm a documentarian. My wife might be dead, but I still have to. It's it's really frustrating. Um, but what I was saying is they managed to be really, really disturbing in the first game without uh, women or children involved. This game, they bring them in and they make full use of them. And I, I don't want to say more than that in case you do want to play the game or in case you are um, sensitive to that type of, of content. But it's really disturbing. This is a game I would not play with 99% of the people that I know. Um, it's, it's that bad. It's that horrifyingly just awful and that's what it's going for it's going for the shock horror not necessarily psychological people have been saying that it's psychological horror i don't think it's even on that level i think it's just trying to like horrify you and disgust you and uh, uh, repel you in any way it can and people perceive that as psychological 
horror, which I suppose to some extent it is, but psychological horror is built slowly. P.T., for instance. P.T., if you didn't play that, go on YouTube and watch uh, gameplay of it. Even if you're watching like the game Grumps tackle it, it's super entertaining to watch. Uh, it was canceled, of course, which is heartbreaking. But PT was put out as a demo on the PS4, and uh, essentially it allowed you to go through and you would move through these hallways, and it was a cyclical thing. So as you move through, you'd open the door, the door would close and then you'd restart the same cycle that you did um, just before and every time you did it it would change ever so slightly so you go through the entire room and or the entire circle and you're like oh everything's fine okay that was nothing you go through you get a phone call you answer it no one says anything like, okay you walk through again and then you go through and you listen to the radio and they're talking about a guy that murdered his family and you're like oh okay you go through again you hear a baby crying in the sink of the bathroom but you can't get in there so you just go through the room, go back out. The baby's not crying anymore, but there's blood seeping through the, the floor under the dead or under the, the um, uh, door. Like you go through all of these little, little things and it's just slowly ratcheting up in your head. This game just tries to shock you by basically having you raped by a giant hairy monster beast. It's, it's like my cat late at night. It's so... Um, I think parts of it are lazily done because it's just going for cheap, disgusting, horrible, whatever. People were upset about Marilyn Manson in the 90s. Marilyn Manson would be offended at most of this stuff. Like, it, it's it's that bad. This It's really, really horrible. And then the ending of the game, you sit there at the end and you're like, what? 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 I don't know what to make of this. I wanted a happy ending, but nope, you don't get that. That's too good for you. And I've heard some theories that link it back to the first game and Murkoff and the, the experiments. That's probably what it is. They wouldn't name it. They said it's it takes place in the same universe. And because of that, I think it's all related. There's a, a theory that the people in this game are crazy because they, they're in Arizona. They're relatively close to some relay that was controlling people's minds as part of the Murkoff whatever experiments. And... Um, it's just, it, I don't know. I, I have a lot to say about it. I was hoping this game would be so good. I was really hoping. That's all I wanted. But no, no. It's uh, lazy horror that's purely meant to horrify and terrify and disgust and offend. Um, it's like their goal throughout the entire game was to see how many people they could get to quit playing by the end. Not because it's so scary, but because it's just gross and because people feel like bad, like it's infecting them. It does affect your mental state. I needed to watch like two hours of South Park after finishing it to cleanse, cleanse my, my brain. It's just really, really frustrating. Um, it had a lot of potential, but I'll, I'll stop talking about it there. I do talk more uh, about the Ludo narrative dissonance in that video. That'll be up Monday. Um, I do want to say something though, uh, while I'm explaining this, please put all of your questions in the chat or tweet them at me at Luke Stevens TV and, um, I'll read those off. So make sure you drop all of those comments in the chat while I explain this next little portion. So go ahead and do that. Um, little Patreon announcement. I am very, very, uh, thankful for all of my patrons, um, that sponsor this show that help make it a reality that help make it happen. Because again, like I've always said, I am a poor struggling college student. And so any thing, uh, honestly does, it does help. Um, and I'm, I'm very thankful to all of you who choose to support me directly on Patreon. Right now, the list of patrons that I have, um, I think this is actually updated recently. So let me pull this off. I do want to read off the names uh, of the patrons because I do, or at least the patrons that I have. Community, maybe? Maybe? I don't know where to find the list of patrons. 
Uh, regardless, many of you guys are very, very generous. Uh, we have, I think, seven patrons, and we are floating at about uh, $80 per month. That's brilliant. That basically allows me to cover one AAA game throughout the month, uh, or each month, and it's covered by the channel, and uh, it, it it's really, really great, and I really appreciate it. Um, now, I, I've been thinking of a way to give back to you guys more directly to those Patreon supporters and uh, to do that in a way that's more easy to do and a little more, uh, I don't know, feasible and fair to everybody. Um, I'm also going to change this gameplay because as you go down into that basement, you experience one of the most um, horrendous things in the entire game. So I'm not going to subject you to that. Um, so... Uh, what I've decided to do is I've got some videos that are going to be coming out in the next couple weeks, uh, probably not this coming week, but the week after, because this coming week is finals. But, uh, the week after I'm going to be doing a long winded review in the same style as the one I did for Horizon Zero Dawn. Um, I'm going to be doing long winded reviews of games like Outlast 2, um, Zelda, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. I'm going to be doing, um... Uh, of course, the Nintendo Switch, just period, the console, whether or not I think it's worth getting in its current state. Uh, I'm going to be doing all those long-winded reviews, and those can be anywhere from 20 to 30 to 45 minutes, depending on how energetic I feel at that time. And so what Patreon supporters are going to get is you guys are going to get early access to those videos, minimum of a day, um, might be even up to two days early access. So if you support me on Patreon, even a dollar a month, um, you will get to see those videos a day, two day to two days early. Um, and th that's just an easy way that I can give you guys a little bonus, a perk that uh, doesn't take anything away from the rest of the audience. And I think it's a, a pretty straightforward and easy solution. So um, that's that's what we're gonna that's what we're gonna do. Hopefully you're okay with it. Um, and if you want to support me on Patreon, that's always an option. Even if it's just a buck a month, you'd still get access to those perks, to exclusive uh, sort of uh, Q&A things that we do. Uh, really cool stuff. Um, but with all that said, let's see what we got. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. Let's see. 101 Mythbusters says, what are some of your favorite books? Also, do you read comic books? I have never been a comic book guy. My brother got into it for a little while. Um, I, I was always a video game guy. I just I just jumped right to the video game. So I, I never did much uh, in the way of comic books. As for books, I can actually show you the book I'm reading right now. Just a second. I have read it a couple times. Uh, a couple times. It's one of my favorites, actually. And it is A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens. I really, really love this book. And I'm reading through it now. Um, it's one of those books that makes you feel really impotent as a writer once you read, like, what this person, what Charles Dickens was able to just smidgen out seemingly easily um you know like the classic it was the best of times it was the worst of times it was the age of wisdom it was the age of foolishness it was the epoch of belief it was the epoch of incredulity it was the season of light it was the season of darkness it was the spring of hope it was the winter of despair we had everything before us we had nothing before us we were all going direct to heaven we were all going direct the other way in short the period was so far like the present period, that some of its noisiest authorities insisted on its being received for good or for evil in the superlative degree of comparison only. Like, poetry. Poetry. And this is an entire book of poetry. Um, of course, not poetry, but it's like 300 pages of just incredible writing of um, a brilliant story. I like the setting, of course. I, I just love it. I love Tale of Two Cities. That's what I'm reading right now. Probably one of my favorite books uh, of all time. That Crime and Punishment is is a favorite of mine by Fedor uh, Doiste, Doiste, ah, Dostoevsky. There we go. I, I just need to calm down. I have that guy too. Um, where is he? Out here, here, found him, found him, found him, found him. 
Crime and Punishment. There he is. Uh, classic. Classic book. Love it. Really good. If you haven't read it, I highly recommend it. Um, but there we go. Uh, so, <laughs> long-winded answer. There you go. Um, Nahuel says, something I learned in 2017 is that you have... Uh, you have to set your expectations really low to avoid being disappointed. Um, yeah, the, I mean, I learned that primarily in 2016. We've had such good games. We've had some really good games in 2017, but we've also had some really disappointing ones, uh, like Mass Effect and Andromeda, like Outlast 2 for me personally. Um, and I, it's just the nature of it. There's always going to be disappointments here and there, but we have to also look at the good. We've had Resident Evil 7. We've had Horizon Zero Dawn. We, I mean, we've had some really good games as well. So we just need to, to, um, also, you know, accentuate the positive as they say. Uh, Geralt of Rivia says, I watched some cat vids before going to bed and I still felt uneasy after Outlast 2. Yeah, you need to do that because that game is messed up. Um, Ninja Potato says, would you recommend Outlast 2 to people looking for a gore porn horror? Uh, <laughs> a gore porn horror. Um, I, I don't know. Probably. Probably. Um, it does have some really, really really messed up stuff in it uh so i would recommend that to you i i would say yeah yeah if that works for you is that boy says hey not sure if you remember me recommending a few artists for you to listen to from death grips to george ezra just wanted to know if you've listened to any of them since then i do believe i uh i have spotify i do believe i looked up george ezra if i remember correctly that was three maybe four weeks ago maybe i don't know um but yeah, that was the same episode that people were recommending um, Kendrick Lamar. People recommended that to me, and I listened to some of his stuff uh, recently as well. So yeah, I've uh, I have um, listened to some of that. I got to go back and finish it out and look up all of them. Um, whoops, where is it? Where is it? Da -da -da -da. Uh, Dimitri Delafield says, "Is horror a profitable um, and advancing game genre or a deteriorating one?" That's a very good question. I think it's always related to trends. I think horror is a trend that really found a niche in the early days of the YouTube Let's Players. People like PewDiePie, people like Jacksepticeye, people like Markiplier. Those guys made a lot of these horror games. Five Nights at Freddy's wouldn't be a thing without Markiplier. Um, Amnesia wouldn't be a thing without PewDiePie. Outlast wouldn't be a thing without PewDiePie. I mean, a lot of these games have been made by YouTubers, and I think as YouTubers have kind of moved on, and as viewers have grown up and moved on, because when you think about it, three four five years ago we were when those games initially came out we were all very different um a lot of us were much younger and a lot of their audiences that promoted those games are are much older and have different tastes now um and that, that's fine that's perfectly natural uh I, I'm not sure if it's the current trend. I think um, RPGs are one of the biggest trends that people are looking for. I think people are getting a, a deeper appreciation for history and historical games. One of the reasons Battlefield 1 and Call of Duty World War 2 are going to do so well. So I think it's just not a trend anymore. So it, it's probably deteriorating more than anything else. I don't think it's growing, certainly. Uh, Lisa McGram says... Um, uh, it says, good luck with your finals. Thank you, Lisa. I hope they go well. I think they will. Uh, Dimitri Delafield says, do you think you'll be able to pass your finals? <laughs> uh, I think so. Right now, I... Um I am set to transfer to Colorado State University in the fall. Uh, I have orientation for uh, CSU on the 24th of May. It's going to be fun. And so I'm already accepted in everything. I was already accepted once and I also accepted to CU Denver. Um, settled for CSU for a majority of reasons, uh, like a vast array of uh, reasons that I could talk about in another video. Um, very, very bizarre circumstances anyway uh yeah no everything's going well everything's going well uh all a's or high b's and i'm hoping i can get that economics micro econ uh grade up high one of the reasons i don't like <laughs> economics is because it's all theoretical so if you talk to one professor and you're like hey what is is this economic theory or model correct and he's like oh no i think that you should do this theory because Er Marx said that this is what you should do and i'm like oh, okay well my macroeconomics teacher mr seed said 
no, it's this one because the Marxist model didn't work. And it's like, no, he is wrong. He is a capitalist scumbag. And I'm like, what? I don't know. Uh -huh. Like, it just, it's hard to keep up with. It's like philosophy. It's very, very opinionated. And you can point to some things as factual, some market trends as realities of how markets work. But a lot of it, depending on your teacher, like my current microeconomics teacher is much more focused on like environmental aspects because he teaches an environmental impact course or whatever. So in a microeconomics course, he's spending most of the time talking about how like regulations from the EPA are good for the economy. And I'm like, this is that's a macro issue because it's fiscal or monetary policy. We're not talking about fiscal or monetary policy because that's macro. We're in microeconomics. We should be dealing with small interactions on a business level. But no, OK, apparently not. I could rant about this for a while, as you can tell. <laughs> um, uh, let's see. Let's see. Da -da 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 -da. Do 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 do. Da, 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 da. What do we have um, anymore? I lost my place. Let's see. Dimitri Delafield says the Republic by Plato is good too. Yes, I have. Uh, I have that right about. I think it's there. I think it's right there, right there. Um, and hey, I'm fingering my bookshelf. Uh, yeah, no, I I do like the Republic by Plato. Um, really, really good stuff. Um, whoops, whoops, I, I scrolled too far. Um, 101 Mythbuster says, you mentioned you have a brother. Do you have any other siblings? Also, have you read The Road by Cormac McCarthy? I have not read The Road. Uh, and I do have a lot of siblings, actually. I grew up in a family of 10. I was third in line. So, and no, we're not Catholic. We're not Mormon. <laughs> a lot of people ask us that. No, we just have a lot of, a lot of brothers and sisters. Never a dull moment. But I have uh, an older brother, Joe. Uh, Joe, uh, Josiah, I have an older sister, uh, Mary, uh, Mary's in some of the videos. If you go back and watch like my first million is what I called the video. If you watch that, she's in that video. Um, she's married. She moved to, to Michigan. Mary got married. Uh, Joe is married and is expecting his first child. Um, he's going to be a father, which is so weird to think about. And that'll happen in August. Uh, he's still local, thankfully. And, um, yeah, then it's me. I'm, I'm here, uh, <laughs> doing YouTube crap. Uh, and then, uh, I have three younger brothers that I just introduced to, uh, Dark Souls 3, by the way. They're really enjoying it. And then I also have, um, three sisters beneath that. And then one younger brother, Eli, who knocked on the door earlier in the episode. If you go back and watch, I'm sure you can hear it. Um, if you heard a light thud, that was him knocking on the door, but I didn't want to go and, and stop the stream. Um... Let's see. Da, 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 da. Lisa says, I hope the Assassin's Creed games comes out this year, but only if it's good. I'd rather wait for a good game. Yeah, no, they've said they're not, they're open to the idea of waiting till 2018. I would be shocked if they don't uh, unveil or at least announce it at E3, though. We'll hear something about it. I, I can almost guarantee you. Uh, Is That Boy says, have you ever read Frankenstein? And if so, uh, what did you think about it? I did read Frankenstein. I also uh, have the audio book on audible.com. I'm not sponsored sponsored, but I did try it. That was my free book. Um, and I like it. It makes you really understand how Hollywood works though, because <laughs> the book is like not at all, uh, related to the, the sort of, um, Hollywood interpretation of, of the story, but I, I like it. I like it. I'm not sure which, I think young Frankenstein will always be my favorite iteration of it. Um, Hunter Martin says, what upcoming game are you most anticipating? Probably Assassin's Creed, uh, whatever that ends up being of the announced ones, probably Red Dead Redemption, uh, or Cyberpunk 2077. We've at least seen Red Dead Redemption 2. So I can at least say that I I'm excited for that because I know what it looks like at the very least. Um, but yeah, a lot of games, a lot of games. I'm really excited. Gerald Rivia says, were you raised religious? I ask because I was, and it affected how creepy LS2 to me or was to me. Um, yes, I, I was raised religious, raised Christian. We moved all over the place. So we went to a lot of different churches growing up. Um, like a lot of different, we were constantly shifting churches, never really found one, but I've, I've been in services of everything from a Catholic mass to uh, an Orthodox ceremony, whatever, to um, a Mormon, whatever thing for a talent show they did all the way down to like deep South Baptist 
hardcore. Um, I, I tend to have fun with the Calvinistic side because it gets real. You get into some really good debates and uh, things. I have Calvin's Institutes over there, right next to my Federalist Papers, right there. Um, and it's like this thick, and it's thousands of pages long. It's it's basically like a third Bible, um, like two Bibles squished. That's how big it is. But it offers some really cool intellectual exercises. Even if you're not religious or not crazy into religion, it's still a really cool mental exercise to follow it because it's thousands of pages, but it's all consistent arguments and it flows really, really brilliantly. Um, it's really impressive. Uh, Ninja Potato says, are you ready for Destiny 2? Didn't play the first one, wasn't crazy into it, so we'll just have to see. Um, Geralt says, follow up, if you were raised religiously, do you feel it helped the game? It did make it much more freaky because you hear the pastor saying all this stuff and it gives you context. As with anything, context to any horror or any story or narrative really helps you appreciate it or not appreciate it, depreciate it, I guess. Um, so yeah, it, it did give the game more of an impact, probably made it even more disturbing. Um, do, 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 do. Um, Dimitri says, I'm okay with games marketed for playthroughs though. Yeah, I'm fine with it. Doesn't mean I have to enjoy it though. Uh, let's see. Lightning Vision Gaming says, hi, I really like your channel. I'm glad to hear that. Do you think we will see an announcement for Assassin's Creed Empire in early May? Um, I can maybe, maybe in May, they, Ubisoft has a history of announcing games in May. Um, they might drop a, a trailer out of the blue um, in like mid-May. We'll have to see. Um, and then reveal it officially at E3. That would probably be the most likely course of action, I'd say. So I'd say that's a reasonable assumption. Um, let's see. Uh, Is that Boy says, are you excited for Middle Earth Shadow of a War? And did you play the original? I did play the original, really enjoyed it. The sequel doesn't look to have done too much differently, but we'll see. I'm sure I'll play it, uh, play it and, and, uh, have a good time. Um, Let's see, uh, Lisa says, internet marketing is like economics as well. It's the same opinion-based work. Yeah, trust me, I know. <laughs> trust me, I know. Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. Let's see. Um, uh, let's see. And we'll finish with this guy, Serge Voulin, or Woolen, uh, says, hi, I love your channel. I'm really glad to hear that. Thank you for, for being here. Um, says, I, I was wondering what do you think about an Assassin's Creed game taking place in 14th or 15th century Serbia and your thoughts on the, I think it's called the Odyssey of Mankind. Um, well, as for an Assassin's Creed game in uh, 14th to 15th century Serbia, there's a lot of really interesting settings that you could put Assassin's Creed. Uh, really, really interesting settings. Everything from the Wild West they were apparently heavily considering um, to they were also considering a, a more elaborate one on the Mongols um, and Genghis Khan and all that, which could be really interesting. Um, there's a lot of really interesting options. Honestly, what I believe it is, I think they hit a, a kind of wall with their development because they realized how the closer they got to the modern day, that not only did it make the entire core of the Assassin's Creed gameplay not work and just kind of collapse, but it also made it so that their Abstergo plotline had to start taking more of a focus than the historical plotline. And as a result of that, players became split and constantly were going back and forth, like in Outlast 2, where the pacing gets all off. Assassin's Creed 3 is a great example of just horrendous pacing in a game. And it's because it's just so slow and dragging you by your hair. It's just terrible. Um, and I think they realized that the closer they got, that they would have to start focusing on it. And they said, you know what? We don't need to. Uh, and they, they solved that problem by putting a new franchise named Watch Dogs in the modern day to allow players to kind of have an Assassin's Creed style game in the modern day. So much so that they have crossover in phone calls in certain missions where you can actually hear them talking about the franchises. Um, but uh, yeah, it's just... I don't know. There's a lot of good options as to where they could go. It's just, it's going to be interesting to see what they choose. I really honestly do hope they went back to Egypt because I just, I've wanted a good game in ancient Egypt for so long, ever since I was a wee boy. That's all I've wanted. Um, 
let's see. Uh, and we'll finish with this guy because I saw it and I thought it would be funny. I, I think I've addressed this before. Is that boy says, man, I was going to ask if you'd ever smoked weed. Controversy boy. Um, I, I, I'm assuming you're addressing me. Maybe not. I don't know. Either way. No, I, I don't smoke pot. It makes people smell really bad. I just have never liked it. Me and my mom, we have really sensitive noses. It's probably because of the size. And uh, <laughs> we we just have never, like, it, high standards for, for odor. And uh, that odor is not one I am a fan of. Plus, it also makes me complacent. And I am not somebody who likes to relax. Um, I, I don't like having free time. So I try to keep myself busy and we kind of would undo a lot of that. I don't like being relaxed just in general, so it's it's not really for me. If you want to do it, that's fine. But when people here in Colorado are like, you don't smoke pot, what? It's like, yeah, I don't smoke pot. I know it's April 20th. I don't care. I don't care that it's April 20th. I just want to, like, get my caramelizer freeze from Dutch Bros and sit down and play Persona. That's all I want. Um, but with that, with that, we I always try to do these Q and A's and have a keep it strict. But I feel bad skipping over questions or not answering questions, um, and so I always go over time. I got to work on that. I need to have like sponsors or something that keep me honest and and you know slap me when I go over time. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I'm bad at time management, I suppose. But with all that said, I think we'll cut it there. We'll finish up there. Thank you for all of you who stuck around and watched the full show. Um, last plug, I do want to encourage you guys. I tweeted this out. Let me pull it up. Um, I, just before you leave, before you leave, come on, come on, come on. Here we go. I, I want you guys to check out my Twitch also, it's right here, uh, twitch.tv slash TV, and uh, feel free to hit the follow button or whatever it is. Um, I will be doing gameplay over there in the near future. Another reason to follow me on Twitter so that you get notified of when that happens, um, and uh, we, can, we can do that. Um, it's going to be really, really fun. It's going to be fun. So make sure that you check out that Twitch stream twitch channel we're going to be doing some stuff over the summer there uh especially it's going to be fun get ready we're going to do it but that's all i have to say thank you for watching thank you for sticking it out really appreciate it see you guys in the next video peace out